Welcome to our lecture online. We're going to find the eigenvector or the dominant eigenvector using the approximation method, but so we can compare it to the actual values, let's go ahead and use the traditional ways to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this particular matrix A. So first let's find the eigenvalues. We can do that by taking the determinant. We have 2 minus lambda, that would be the eigenvalue, minus 12, 1 minus 5 minus lambda, and we set this determinant equal to 0 to find the two eigenvalues, if indeed there are two eigenvalues. So here we can cross multiply those, we have 2 minus lambda times minus 5 minus lambda minus the product of those two, which is 1 minus 12, and we set that equal to 0, and that will give us a quadratic equation that will give us the two eigenvalues. So multiplying this together, lambda squared, that will be minus 5, let's see, plus 5 lambda, and minus 2 lambda, that would be plus 3 lambda, and here we have 2 minus 5, that's minus 10, and here minus times a minus, that would be plus 12 equals 0, lambda squared plus 3 lambda plus 2 equals 0, which means we have lambda plus 2 times lambda plus 1 equals 0, and therefore the two eigenvalues in this case is lambda equals 2, let's call that eigenvalue 1, and lambda equals, or I should say negative 2, negative 2, and negative 1, let's call that lambda 2. So here are the two eigenvalues. Now we'll use those to find the two eigenvectors, starting with uh, lambda sub 1, so lambda sub 1 equals minus 2, and what we're going to do now is we're going to multiply the matrix where we have 2 minus a minus 2, which is plus 2, minus 12. Here we have 1 minus 5, minus a minus 2, which is plus 2, because we have to subtract the eigenvalues from that. So we have this matrix multiplied times the vector x and y. So this would be the corresponding eigenvector for this particular eigenvalue, and we set that equal to 0. So what we did was we subtracted the eigenvalue from the diagonals, multiplied times the eigenvector, the unknown eigenvector x, y. We're trying to find x, y, and we set that equal to the zero vector. So this becomes 4 minus 12, 1 minus 3, multiplied times x, y, and we set that equal to zero. So now we can make that into an augmented matrix. And uh, so this can now be written as follows, 4 minus, one, minus 3 augmented with 0, 0. And now we're going to turn this into the row echelon form, except very quickly I realized that row 2 happens to be 1 quarter row 1. In other words, these are identical rows. If we multiply the bottom one by 4, we get the exact same thing. So this can now be written as 4 minus 12. 0, 0, 0, 0, because it's a duplicate row. And then if we divide the top row by 1, we can write this as 1 minus 3, 0, 0, 0, 0. Which means, in this case, we have 1x minus 3y equals 0, x minus 3y equals 0, or x equals 3y, which means if y is equal to 1, then x is equal to 3, which means the eigenvector v1 associated with this particular eigenvalue is going to be equal to 3 and 1. We do it again for the other eigenvalue. So the second eigenvalue is y2 is equal to negative 1. So, or I should say lambda 2 is equal to negative 1. So again, we do the same thing. We subtract negative 1 from the diagonals. So 2 plus 1, because a negative negative 1 is plus 1, minus 12, 1, minus 5 plus 1, times xy equals 0, the 0 vector. So we do the exact same thing. So this now becomes 3 minus 12, 1 minus 4, times xy becomes a 0 vector. And now we write the augmented matrix. So we have minus 3, four, minus 12. and 
that's zero, zero. And again, we realize that the bottom row is one third the top row. So we can divide this by, by three and get rid of this. So this becomes one, negative four, zero, 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 zero. And that means that one X minus four Y equals zero or X equals four Y. And if Y is equal to one, then X is equal to four. And therefore the vector two corresponding to this particular eigenvalue is four and one. So there's the two eigenvectors relative to the two corresponding eigenvalues. Now we're going to use the approximation method to find the dominant eigenvector and the corresponding eigenvalue. So again, we start with the matrix A. Minus 12, 1, Two. and negative 5. And we're going to multiply that times a presumed eigenvector. We can start with 1, 1. And let's see what we get. So when we multiply this, we get 2 minus 12. That gives us minus 10. And 1 minus 5, that gives us minus 4. And this is equal to, if I multi, let's see, I can factor out a, um, hmm, hmm, how about a 4? I can factor out a minus 4, and this would then become 2.5 to 1. All right, so there's my first approximation. And next, what I can do is I can multiply the same vector, our a vector here, 2 minus, minus 5, multiply it times minus 10 and minus 4. Or I can make it simple and I can multiply it times 2 and a half and 1, but let's go ahead and do it like this and see what we end up with. So that becomes minus 20 and plus 48. That gives me 28. And here I get minus 10 plus 20. That gives me 10. So if I factor out, let's see here, I could factor out a, um, a 10. So this is equal to 10 times 2.8 to 1. Hmm, I'm beginning to think that my eigenvector seems to converge to 3 and 1. Of course, I have a little bit of help here that I know that it's 3 and 1. But even if I didn't know that my eigenvector was 3 and 1, I would begin to see that that's a likely scenario, that I'm likely going to get the eigenvector 3 and 1. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to multiply my original matrix A, 2, minus 5, minus 12. by what I think it's the eigenvector is going to be 3 and 1. It never hurts to guess, and even if it's wrong, you just keep going for a while until it converges to the proper eigenvector. So let's go ahead and multiply this out and see what we get. That's 6 minus 12, which is minus 6, and this is 3 minus 5, which is minus 2. And notice if I factor out a minus 2, I get back 3 and 1, which is the same as what I have over here. Success! I found the dominant eigenvector. The dominant eigenvector, which uh, I guess I would be called V1, is equal to 3 and 1. And then the corresponding eigenvalue is the factor that I pulled out, and therefore lambda sub 1 is equal to minus 2. And notice that's exactly what I got over here when I did a traditional method. I got the eigenvalue minus 2 with the corresponding eigenvector 3 and 1. Notice this is much easier and this will give us the dominant eigenvector in a very rapid method. And that's how it's done.